In the pantheon of legendary rivalries, Sprite vs. 7-Up ranks somewhere near the top, alongside the Yankees and the Red Sox, and the Autobots and Decepticons. But while those first two battles rage eternal, that last one has been pretty firmly settled, with Sprite taking a massive lead in the 1990s and never looking back. So how'd they do it? Well, today, we're clearing up how Sprite beat out 7-Up. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food Channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know what other carbonated beverage rivalries you would like to hear about. Okay, time to obey your thirst. By 1929, Charles Leeper Grigg was an old hand in the soda business. He started in advertising and sales for a soft drink company way back in 1890. But Grigg was something of an inventor, and in 1916, he created an orange soda called Whistle. After having some creative differences with the manufacturer, he moved to another company, and in 1920, he created yet another orange soda, this time called Howdy. Well, howdy, I'm a cowboy! He apparently believed in naming his sodas after traditional southern greetings, but Grigg ran into a little problem called Orange Crush. Later in 1906, the brand was a well-established success, and the public didn't seem to have much of a need for another orange soda. Taking the hint, Grigg did exactly what Beyonce would probably advise him to do. He took the lemons that life gave him, and he made lemon soda. And that beverage was given the now iconic name of Bib Label Lithiated Lemon Lime Soda. Okay, so that name doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, which is probably why Greg quickly changed it to 7-Up Lithiated Lemon Soda, and then in 1936, just to 7-Up. Now, some of you were probably wondering if the word lithiated means the drink contained the psychoactive drug lithium, and the answer is an emphatic yes. Greg emphasized the drink's mood-enhancing abilities in his marketing. Why not call it lithium? In my office. Now! If putting lithium in a soft drink sounds reckless, well, that's because it is. Excessive doses of lithium can cause fun things like dizziness, nausea, diarrhea, and seizures, none of which are welcome activities at the soda hop. The company stopped using it as an ingredient in 1948, but only because the government made it illegal. As to what the name 7-Up actually means, well, no one knows. One theory is that it's a reference to the number of ingredients or flavors in the recipe. Others claim it refers to an experience Grigg had while gambling, and some others point to a strange joke Grigg once made about the drink being the cure for the seven hangovers. Seven hangovers? We only know of two. Sweaty morning shift and I've missed my flight. It's not coming off! This is a real tattoo! Whatever the name means, the public didn't really care. They loved the stuff, and 7-Up became a massive success. By the 1970s, it was the number three selling soda in America, behind only Coke and Pepsi. When you think of Germany, you probably think of mountains, sausage, creepy fairy tales, and beer. Talk of the old country generally doesn't provoke images of crisp citrus soda, which is why you may be surprised to learn that Sprite is from Germany. Formulated by the Fanta Company of West Germany way back in 1959, the drink was marketed in its homeland as Clear Lemon Fanta, or Fanta Klar Zitron, to be precise. It didn't actually get its now famous name until two years later when it was imported to the American market. And while Coca-Cola did introduce a mascot called Sprite Boy in the 1940s, a little helper elf for their Santa Claus mascot who was quickly retired for being pure nightmare fuel, his name, which was a reference to the mascot elf-like qualities, was just a coincidence. The name of the soda Sprite was actually created by a Houston-area Coke distributor named T.C. Bud Evans for a separate line of products, with Coke purchasing the trademark from him in 1960. After debuting in a handful of local test markets, Sprite, as we know it, went on sale in 1961. At the time, 7-Up was the only major lemon-lime soda available, so Coke saw an opening and shot their shot. They introduced Sprite specifically to compete with 7-Up, and it was an instant hit. By the late 1960s, it was available in 40 countries around the world, and in the U.S., an impressive 75% of all American consumers had purchased a Sprite. Starting in the 1940s, 7-Up started using the slogan, Fresh Up with 7-Up, which sort of sounds like they're encouraging you to splash a little in your underarm area after a particularly long bus ride. Millions of families have grown to prefer the fresh, clean taste that's exclusively, uniquely 7-Up. The campaign was aimed at establishing 7-Up as a family drink, and they continued using the slogan into the 1960s. Time to fresh up with 7-Up. 
It was right around then that 7up pivoted to emphasizing how different it is from products like Coke and Pepsi by calling itself the Uncola. The popular slogan, along with a series of commercials starring actor Jeffrey Holder, nice. a up might be nice. carried the company into the 1980s. Then in 1987, they introduced an animated mascot named Spot, who was an anthropomorphized version of the Red Spot in the 7up logo wearing sunglasses and high tops. All things being equal, he was pretty damn cool. Although Spot could only express himself through weird, high-pitched noises, <laughs> it didn't stop him from appearing in a huge advertising campaign that included multiple commercials, a wave of merchandise, and even a surprise hit video game. No, really, it's pretty good. Spot was an attempt to step away from the family image and integrate 7up with the lucrative kids and teen market. The only problem was, Coke was thinking the exact same thing. Although the earliest Sprite marketing campaigns were clearly aimed at adults, in the mid-1980s, the Coca-Cola company realized there was an even better cash cow consumer to target, teenagers. That meant the soda had to seem young and cool, and at the time, nothing captured youthful cool like the emerging hip-hop scene. Sprite was an early proponent of hip-hop. In 1986, right around the same time Adidas was forging a groundbreaking relationship with Run DMC, Sprite put out a commercial featuring the rapper Curtis Blow rhyming about the soda and dissing 7-Up. So One of the first national TV commercials to feature a rapper, the ad pushed the slogan, Now More Than Ever. Now more than ever. And even got Curtis to name drop Lyman, Sprite's ridiculous trademark name for its lemon lime flavoring. Hey, we just said Lyman. Where's our check, Sprite? The ad success would point the way to the future, and Sprite's new relevance would soon put it ahead of 7up in the marketplace. By the 1990s, most of Sprite's marketing would be connected to hip hop. In the years after the Curtis Blow commercial, Sprite would continue collaborating with hip hop artists like Kid and Play, Heavy D and the Boys, and Criss Cross. Then, in 1994, the Coca-Cola company unveiled a massive new hip-hop-centered campaign around the slogan, Obey Your Thirst. Hip -hop, you don't stop. Over the next five years, Sprite would collaborate with a murderer's row of popular hip-hop artists. Seriously. By the turn of the millennium, the soda company would have commercials featuring A Tribe Called Quest, Fat Joe, Common, Nas, Missy Elliott, KRS-One, and LL Cool J. But arguably, the most memorable commercial from this period didn't feature a rapper at all. In the now iconic 1996 commercial called Grant Hill Drinks Sprite, Grant Hill Drinks Sprite, a teenager watches the NBA star take a swig of Sprite before pulling off a spectacular dunk. The inspired teen takes a gulp of his own Sprite and tries to do the same thing, only to wipe out embarrassingly. The ad taught every 90s teen that if you want to make it to the NBA, you need to practice. But if you want a refreshing drink, you should obey your thirst and drink Sprite. Did it work? Well, according to one expert, in 1990, Sprite was a minor presence in the soft drink market. By 2000, it was the number five selling drink in the U.S. and was heavily outselling 7-Up. With Sprite pretty much locking down every viable hip-hop star west of the Pecos, 7-Up had to find a different direction. They made some headway with the Cool Spot mascot and got some attention by sponsoring Jordan Grand Prix's Jordan 191, famous for being the car racing legend Michael Schumacher drove in the first Formula One race. Hey, I'm the guy. Starting in 1999, the Clear Soda found another surprise success with comedian Orlando Jones and a subversively cheeky ad campaign. The commercials featured Jones wearing the new slogan, Make 7 Up Yours, on a t shirt with the words, Make 7 on one side and Up Yours on the other. It's not exactly highbrow humor, but the simple gag combined with Jones' cheerful obliviousness you see, it's catching on already. made the ads a hit. 7up kept the campaign going for six years. Oh, we going global with this baby. Both 7up and Sprite are synonymous with lemon lime flavor, but both brands eventually decided to branch out in an attempt to one up each other. Or would that be 7up each other? Sprite, for example, tried out variations including, but not limited to, green tea, cool mint, lemon mint, lemon lime and cucumber, ginger, peach, cranberry, cherry, winter spiced cranberry, and because nobody can resist a good portmanteau, lemonade. In 2014, LeBron James even got to create his own flavor called LeBron Mix. To create his concoction, King James basically just added some orange and cherry to the classic Sprite formula, which does sound pretty tasty. The collaboration went so well that in 2021, Sprite let Daddy Yankee design a tropical flavor, which he dubbed Daddy Mix by Daddy Yankee. 
7-Up, meanwhile, had offered a cherry variety, as well as citrus, orange, raspberry, pomegranate, tropical twist, salted lemon, mojito, mixed berry, a Colombia-only formulation made with yerba buena mint, and a special retro variety that used cane sugar in place of the usual corn syrup. Aside from being a perennially famous ingredient in highballs, 7-Up has also licensed its name to a successful line of barbecue sauces, which also includes sauces based on Dr. Pepper and A&W root beer. For that authentic, my nephew spilled his drink on the grill taste. Today, 7-Up sells somewhere in the neighborhood of a billion dollars worth of product a year. That sounds like a lot, but it's not even good enough to crack the top 10 selling soft drinks in the U.S. In fact, 7-Up dropped out of the top 10 in 2021 and hasn't quite been able to float their way back up since. Sprite, on the other hand, is the sixth most popular soft drink in the U.S. and sells upwards of $6 billion worth a year. That's a lot of Lyman. That dominance is thanks in no small part to Sprite's continuing relationship with hip-hop culture. Notable endorsers include Vince Staples, whose 2015 song North North kicks off by name-dropping Sprite in a lyric, Please grab Sprite. as well as Cap G, Dram, Kamaya, Vic Mensa, and Lil Yachty. In 2019, the company initiated Thirst for Yours, which aimed to help unsigned hip-hop artists make a name for themselves. And in 2023, they unveiled their 50 Years of Hip Hop campaign, which featured stars like Raycom, Lotto, Glorilla, and Nas, reflecting on Sprite's role in the evolution of hip hop. Ironically, Sprite's successful relationship with hip hop only happened because the company hired Curtis Blow to talk trash about its chief rival, 7 Up. So, in a way, they owe it all to the Uncola, best frenemies forever. So, what do you think? Which is your clear cola of choice? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history food videos.